and unhealthy relationships on top of adding drugs and alcohol mm -hmm. to the mix coming to a head and um, when you hit rock bottom there's nowhere to go but up and then I think about that really disturbing footage of Bieber, Odell Beckham and Trey Songz. Yes. Nicki Minaj has just exposed how Diddy exploited Justin Bieber with other industry men. Moreover, Jaguar Wright's recent interview with Storm Monroe has unearthed shocking revelations about Justin Bieber. According to Wright, Bieber's association with Diddy went beyond mere mentorship. He alleges that Diddy not only exploited Bieber for his own gratification, but also facilitated Bieber's exploitation by his acquaintances. Disturbing videos of Bieber have surfaced online following the raid on Diddy's properties, sparking widespread concern and further amplifying the gravity of the allegations. Justin Bieber spent 48 hours with Diddy talking about we about to get it in I'm gonna let you drive the car when you 15 that boy ain't been the same since got all this anxiety face well, collapsed you know, from all the dick you know, and stuff what Milk said is that expensive pay ooh the emergence of fresh discussions revolves around Diddy's peculiar bond with Justin. Even more concerning, as per Nicki Minaj, Diddy allegedly repeated this pattern with numerous other aspiring male artists in the music scene, Meek Mill among them. Meek Mill recently erupted on social media, attempting to dispel any notion of being Diddy's protege. Yet it appears the speculations held some truth. Did Diddy indeed navigate Justin through the industry and how many other young men fell under his sway? Although it seemed like people were exaggerating how crazy things must have been for Justin when he was around Diddy, with everything that has come to light since then, you have to admit that there must have been something very creepy going on there. And Jaguar Wright had a lot to say about it in her recent interview with Strong Monroe. Justin Bieber became popular sometime last year after Cassie's lawsuit was dismissed. During the interview, Jaguar brought up that unsettling video of Justin Bieber hanging out with Odell Beckham and Trey Songs. Like, and, and Trey's like literally sitting there playing Lookout. Playing Lookout as Justin Bieber goes down on Odell. The boy came up with his mouth wet. Mouth wet. What? Dribbling. Now what they're gonna try to say is no, nah, Justin Bieber was just doing a line of coke. No, he didn't mess with his nose when he, he came was doing up. A line of with his mouth. In the footage, it appears as though Justin is engaging in inappropriate behavior with Odell. While some fans have tried to brush it off as Justin simply indulging in co- which is problematic in itself because it involves grown men leading a young brother into a fueled lifestyle, Jaguar claims that it wasn't co- at all. According to her, Justin was indeed doing to Odell exactly what many suspected all along. Just take a look at Justin's wet mouth at the end of the video for confirmation. He wiped his mouth. Will you do his come, mouth was wet. You do this when you finish your line. His you wipe your mouth when you wet. suck it. The post nasal drip. That was seminal fluid. Sir. It was Odell. It appears that Justin might not have been participating willingly. According to Jaguar, Trey Songs was present as a lookout, ensuring that nobody would notice Odell's actions towards Justin, and perhaps to prevent the paparazzi from capturing any evidence of the incident. In addition to Jaguar, Nicki Minaj proceeded to discuss how Justin likely embarked on his current trajectory from the very moment he spent those 48 hours with Diddy. The emergence of footage showing Diddy pledging to give Justin Bieber a car and a house during their alleged 48-hour stint has stirred significant controversy. However, considering all the revelations about Diddy that have surfaced since then, it's unsettling to even watch that video, imagining what Justin might have endured under Diddy's guise of mentorship. Yeah, so as soon as you turn 16, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let you rock this every time. You right? I'm like, yeah, this gonna be yours. So, every oh, time you just okay. in LA, it's a little dusty, but you know. Did you know that Diddy actually gave Justin that car? Yep, within two minutes of getting his driver's license, Justin was seen cruising around town in a Lambo that looked just like the one Diddy promised him. So if Diddy didn't come through, that's quite the coincidence. But here's the real question. Why would Diddy hand over such an extravagant gift to a random kid out of the blue? Many folks speculated that Diddy was simply playing the role of a generous sugar daddy, showering his boy toy with lavish gifts in return for some sweet companionship. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah.
Instagram. After glimpsing the distressing allegations against Diddy from Cassie's lawsuit and Lil Rod's claims, it's not hard to imagine that Justin might have endured something even more intense, considering how young he was when it all began. Just contrast the bright innocence Justin exuded in those early videos with his demeanor less than a decade later. It's evident something deeply affected him. It's bewildering how only now are people starting to connect the dots. Despite the signs being present all along, just observe how visibly uneasy Justin appears in footage conversing with Diddy, struggling to articulate himself under pressure. They really did a number on him, and it's unsettling that it's taken this long for the truth to surface. Supposedly, the backstory behind that video suggests that Justin's team intentionally kept him away from Diddy for a while. They believe Diddy's behavior was negatively impacting Justin's mental and physical well-being. This explains the awkwardness between them when Diddy finally catches up with Justin, eager to resume their antics. There's footage of Diddy seemingly patting Justin down, possibly checking for wires. What Diddy whispered in Justin's ear remains a mystery, but Justin ended the encounter with an I love you. Another overlooked clue is how Justin's indulgence in alcohol and substances coincided with his association with Diddy. Hey, starting to act different, huh? You, you, ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you ever, I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, this, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you, you never really got my number, so. Right. Okay. My number? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry, my number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Five, five, five. yeah. At Diddy's 2014 bash, eagle-eyed observers caught Justin Bieber clutching what seemed to resemble aqua hydrate, typically filled with a transparent liquid. However, upon closer inspection, the bottle in Justin's grasp held a dubious yellow substance, potentially alcohol or some other unknown concoction. Reflecting on that period years later, Justin opened up about the challenges he faced, expressing feelings of pain, discontent, confusion, anger, and a sense of being misunderstood and let down by God. This insight sheds light on the turmoil he was truly experiencing. Despite the facade of peak career success and apparent revelry, it's widely acknowledged that Diddy wasn't solely responsible for Justin Bieber's challenges. Entering the industry at a tender age, he lacked adequate guidance, leaving him susceptible to manipulation and exploitation from various quarters. Adults across the board, from fellow artists to interviewers and hosts, sought to capitalize on Bieber's fame, often disregarding his well-being. Consider Ellen DeGeneres, who shamelessly showcased a revealing paparazzi shot of Justin on her show, followed by probing and uncomfortable inquiries. Just a year later, Justin was at the 2012 Academy Awards with Jenny McCarthy. And just look at what she was doing. Mind you, Justin was barely 18 here, and Jenny was 40 years old. He basically had to pry her off himself. He was so uncomfortable that when he started to give his acceptance speech, he first said, wow, I feel so violated right now. Justin was 16 when James Corden interviewed him for the 2011 Brit Awards in 2011. He was just being a total weirdo around him. In a different video, an interviewer posed a question to 15-year-old Justin that really raised eyebrows. He didn't hesitate to point out the absurdity of it all. Who asks such probing questions to a teenager they barely know? Young Justin Bieber has undoubtedly faced numerous trials in the entertainment world, and his resilience through those tough times is truly remarkable. It's mind-boggling that amidst all the chaos, the very people who should have been his pillars of support, Usher and Diddy, were instead contributing to the turmoil. Just imagine that. Some massive allegations might be coming soon involving Justin Bieber, P. Diddy, and Usher. Usher was discovered when he was 14 years old by P. Diddy. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey, in 2012, Usher admitted that Puff Daddy had brought him to sex parties and exposed him to drugs when he signed to the record label. Usher stepped into Justin's world shortly after Justin landed in Atlanta alongside Scooter Braun when he was just 13. Justin's mother, Patty Millett, had fervently prayed for him to meet trustworthy individuals in the industry. Little did she know that Usher and Scooter would bring unforeseen challenges instead of the hoped-for blessings. Usher assumed the role of mentor for Justin, even assigning his friend Ryan Good to oversee Justin's style and manage his travels. Patty shared that the turning point came when her son Justin, a young lad from a modest upbringing, skyrocketed to global fame seemingly overnight, outstripping the financial success of anyone in their family. She recounted how Justin required someone to keep him grounded amidst the whirlwind of his newfound celebrity status. Sadly, Patty found herself unable to fulfill this role as she lacked regular access to him during his tours. While it's tempting to lay blame on the parents of young stars for exposing them to the peculiarities of Hollywood, sometimes they find themselves utterly powerless against the relentless pressures and manipulations of the industry's predators. Jump ahead a couple of years and Justin found himself under the wing of Diddy after an 
introduction from Usher. Rumors suggest this marked the start of Justin's descent into a shadowy world. According to Gossip, Diddy wasted no time in molding Justin into his protege, much like he did with Usher. Remember when Diddy claimed legal guardianship of Usher during his debut album production? Well, it seems he didn't shy away from exposing Usher to the adult world during that time. Usher opened up about his time residing at Diddy's Puffy Flavor Camp, and Gene Deal hinted at a darker side to Usher's experience. Deal implied that Usher's relationship with Diddy was fraught with difficulties, possibly mirroring what Cassie endured. He even insinuated that the situation escalated to the point where Usher ended up hospitalized. Furthermore, Deal sheds light on Diddy's manipulative tactics, noting how he recruited both Usher and Justin. The details painted a troubling picture of the dynamic at the camp. Usher, Usher looked like he fresh off got their plane. Usher, Usher, Usher. Usher. Fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, check out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes. Gene made an astute observation regarding Usher's likely trauma bond with Diddy, stemming from past experiences where Diddy may have mistreated him. It's intriguing to consider this perspective, as Usher's cautious choice of words whenever discussing Diddy does suggest a certain level of discretion, as if he's guarding against accidentally divulging sensitive information that could stir up speculation. Let's revisit that Howard Stern interview moment. Usher has remained silent on the swirling rumors connecting him to Diddy as more than just friends. However, court records from the Lil Rod lawsuit suggest otherwise. According to the lawsuit, Diddy allegedly disclosed to Jones that he had intimate relations with a well-known rapper and R&B singer, as well as with Stevie J. Although the names were redacted, footnotes hinted at their identities. A Philadelphia rapper linked with Nicki Minaj romantically and a singer with a notable Super Bowl performance and a successful Vegas residency. Before you could blink twice, enthusiasts connected the dots, distinguishing Meek Mill as the rapper and Usher as the R&B sensation. However, amidst the revelations of Usher's wild escapades at Puffy's Flavor Camp, a curious slip from Diddy himself unveiled a surprising detail. He and Usher had shared a bed during Usher's childhood days. In a, at a, on a different level, because I'm seeing him go from his independence to then becoming Puff Daddy, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I got a front row seat looking at that. Now, he attempted to brush it off as a dispute over breakfast cereal, but Kevin Hart's attempt to deflect couldn't mask the truth we all heard. It's puzzling that Usher would try to shield Diddy, yet somewhat understandable considering how traumatic experiences can affect people's perceptions. It appears Usher isn't the only male artist impacted by Diddy, as evidenced by Meek Mill's recent erratic behavior online. Allegations linking Meek Mill to Diddy in the Lil Rod lawsuit suggest he too may have been influenced by the mogul. In her latest conversation with Storm Monroe, Jaguar Wright didn't hold back when discussing Diddy, suggesting he's traded favors numerous times. She even labeled Meek as a power bottom bottom. This isn't the first time Jaguar has aired her thoughts on Meek Mill's interactions within the industry. During an interview with Real Life Productions, she hinted that Meek might have been manipulated by the Smiths when seeking mentorship. Isn't it intriguing how close Will and Jada are to Diddy? I mean, considering that Meek Mill was reportedly involved with Diddy, one might think they could have loaned him out to the Smiths if they needed some fresh company. Plus, with all the legal drama surrounding Diddy, old images and videos of him with Meek Mill have re surfaced, sparking curiosity among fans. Take, for instance, that snapshot of them in matching PJs, almost like they had a slumber party. And then there's that viral clip of Diddy referring to Meek Mill as daddy. Quite unusual for two grown men to use that term for each other, don't you think? All the champagne was spiked, son. Like, all the champagne was spiked. Everybody was passed. The I don't drink. I don't drink, so I was playing that shit off like I don't drink. I smoke. Like, I smoke and I had my own weed, but, like, everybody was passed out. Yo, Diddy had that man in the room. Look, yes, I put my ear to the door and I brought the phone because Diddy started going in overdrive. I ain't know what's going on. Meek has really put in the effort to assert his attraction to women and dispel any rumors about his Remember that week-long Twitter spree? He was adamant about his preferences, joking that he's so into women he's practically setting records. But then he drops a line about how that juicy pee really gets him going, even admitting to some risky maneuvers to satisfy his desires. It's a curious mix of messages, with Meek acknowledging his admiration for the LGBTQ plus community while also distancing himself from any association with styles and rap. He's all about that authentic gangsta vibe, surviving the concrete jungle without compromise. He went as far as accusing the media of conspiring against him, attempting to thwart the success of his latest release. They often resort to accusations of snitching or homosexuality, conveniently coinciding with any artist's rise to fame and fortune in the music industry. Whether true or not, these claims serve to disrupt the hip-hop community. As for his upcoming music release, he asserts ownership, urging listeners to tune in. However, amidst the speculation, one thing he didn't refute 
was his connection to Diddy. Rumors suggest a possible bond between Justin and Diddy, even amid controversies. Despite Diddy's supposed retirement from music, including the sale of his catalog, Justin collaborated on Diddy's latest album, highlighting their enduring connection. In his announcement of the collaboration, Justin reminisced about a time when he pitched a song to his brother Diddy at just 14. Sadly, the song didn't hit the mark, resulting in a swift rejection. Fast forward to recent years, Diddy approached him to freestyle for his new love album, marking a full circle moment. Justin expressed gratitude, calling it a wild turn of events. Adding to the intrigue, a video has surfaced online depicting Justin at a party with Diddy and the game, being offered drinks of uncertain content. Wasn't Puffy interested in, in working with you also? Yeah, Puff, I was running around with Puff uh, for a minute, but we was just, uh, we was just partying, man. Puff liked to party. Um, so that's basically all we did. I think I think the whole the few times I was running around with D Mac and Puff, uh, we just did a bunch of partying. We might have went to the studio once or twice, but I don't think I didn't get to record nothing. I was just speculation arose about spiked drinks, particularly as Justin allegedly seemed disoriented, prompting questions about the nature of the gathering. Similar to Usher, Justin has remained silent regarding his experiences with Diddy. However, he has taken a different approach by creating a documentary that delves into his past, revealing heart-wrenching aspects of his life. Despite his reluctance to speak out publicly about his relationship with Diddy, a source close to Justin suggests that he may be willing to address it, especially in light of ongoing investigations. While Justin may not be eager to openly discuss his connection with Diddy, circumstances might compel him to do so. As of now, Justin hasn't indicated whether he believes Diddy crossed any boundaries, but if he does, he's keeping it to himself. If Justin must confront his past encounters with Diddy, it appears that Jaguar Wright's long-standing allegations about Diddy's unsettling behavior have finally gained traction. Fans have flooded online platforms with comments, expressing concern for Justin and urging him to find strength in facing his experiences. Some emphasize their support for Justin as a victim, contrasting his perceived vulnerability with Cassie resilience. Others call for unity among all victims, urging them to speak out against Diddy and encouraging Justin to take a leading role in this movement. Now, coming back to Nicki Minaj, one of the most electrifying rivalries to ever ignite within hip-hop unfolded between the reigning queens of the genre, Lil' Kim and Nicki Minaj. The hip-hop realm brims with drama, controversies, and petty squabbles, yet nothing quite matches the spectacle of two formidable women locking horns. It appears there's a mogul in the industry who savors this drama as much as any fan. Nicki has recently divulged how this figure coerced her into undermining Lil' Kim's career, setting the stage for a showdown of epic proportions. How did Diddy, with his strategic maneuvering, single-handedly ignite one of the music industry's most iconic feuds? I haven't said anyone's name. and, I, and Only me. And, and yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm saying the name. I'm not saying anybody's name. But that's something that you would seriously be open to? I feel like you just want to get up there and slaughter somebody with a bunch of hits <laughs> no, and features. Uh -uh. No, because I approach those things as a rap fan, not as Nicki Minaj. The dynamic between Nicki Minaj and Lil' Kim has always been tumultuous. These two rap icons haven't exactly been shy about their mutual animosity. Lil' Kim doesn't hold back when talking about Nicki Minaj, often expressing disdain in her remarks. Conversely, Nicki Minaj hasn't minced words either, labeling Lil' Kim as bitter and envious of her achievements in one interview. She reminisced about a time when they seemed core Cordial, but now sees Lil' Kim's attitude as rooted in jealousy. Nikki aptly pointed out that success can intimidate others, especially when it puts them in direct competition. It seems admiration turns to rivalry when the stakes get higher. In the beginning, Nikki admired Kim, but her perception shifted. She believes Kim tarnished her reputation out of jealousy and will now be remembered as bitter. Nikki said, You're going to be known as a sore loser instead of the queen. Their feud doesn't just involve them. Diddy is also a player. While exposing Diddy's role in Justin Bieber's exploitation, Nikki even alleged that Diddy orchestrated her rivalry with Kim. Diddy and Lil's Kim go way back to when she first stepped into the music scene. Diddy and Biggie were inseparable once upon a time, so when Biggie introduced Kim and her captivating rap to Diddy, it didn't take long for her to become a fixture in their circle. Biggie was drawn to Kim's talent like a moth to a flame, as she later revealed in an interview. She said, He became my confidant, my partner, my everything. I was his staunchest supporter. He saw in me the potential to be the foremost female rapper. I believe I sparked in him the desire to innovate, to stand out. Biggie had hoped Diddy would recognize Kim's potential just as he did. However, Diddy's initial reaction to Kim was far from flattering. He bizarrely remarked that she was too beautiful to be taken seriously. Kim vividly remembered this encounter years later, reflecting on Biggie's attempt to introduce her to Puffy by stating, she's too pretty to be a female rapper. What do I do with her? Despite this disrespectful dismissal, Kim might have forgiven Diddy's oversight and his failure to sign her to his label. Yet, he exacerbated the situation by involving Nicki, further souring their relationship. Diddy made a bold move by signing Nikki to his label, but things took a sharp turn when they collaborated on a track together. In the song, Nikki took
took direct shots at Kim, leaving no room for ambiguity. Kim understandably felt slighted by this blatant disrespect, especially since it happened under Diddy's watch. She expressed her disappointment with Diddy's failure to intervene, pointing out instances like Nikki's jab and Hello Good Morning by Dirty Money. Kim's frustration with Diddy's apparent favoritism towards Nikki was palpable, and rightly so. Nicki Minaj. I didn't even know. Who was the who? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. She's wearing a little red riding hood yeah. outfit. Oh. Okay. Yeah, what'd you think? I, I, I didn't see it. Yeah, I, we, it, it just slipped past, I don't that even That slipped know. past you? What's particularly disheartening is how Diddy completely denies the entire situation, as if the song isn't readily available for anyone to access online. In an interview, he brushed it off, portraying himself as the epitome of virtue, claiming he cherishes both Nicki and Kim and would never exploit Nicki to undermine Kim. He even attempted to manipulate the narrative, suggesting that Kim's grievances were merely a figment of her imagination. Sitting there while Nicki rapped about dethroning the queen, Diddy acted as though it was all harmless banter. He expressed full remorse, saying he loves Lil' Kim and regrets her anger, asserting he never anticipated her taking offense to his collaboration with another artist. Yet, if she interprets it negatively, he insists it was never intended as such. Once again, Diddy stepped up to support Nicki, portraying Kim as unreasonable and petty. He emphasized that Nicki hadn't done anything to provoke Kim, nor had she tried to imitate or speak negatively about her. Diddy suggested that Kim should recognize Nicki's consistent respect towards her and accept that Nicki wasn't trying to usurp her. Despite Diddy's stance, Kim refused to let what she perceived as disrespect go unchallenged. She fired back at Nikki in her own track, disregarding Diddy's assurance that Nikki hadn't targeted her at all. In the end, the recent revelations surrounding Diddy's alleged exploitation of young artists like Justin Bieber have sent shockwaves throughout the music industry. Jaguar Wright's interview with Storm Monroe and Nicki Minaj's subsequent comments have shed light on a pattern of behavior that extends beyond just Bieber. The disturbing videos and stories emerging from Diddy's circle raise serious questions about the treatment of young talent in the entertainment world and the role of influential figures in their lives. Make sure to check out some of our other videos on the screen if you enjoyed this one.